have a beautiful garden. <laughs> you take care of it yourself? What? You take care of the garden yourself? Oh yes, yes, so far I have done it all myself. Is it a lot of work? No, it's fun. I say God takes care of the, gar takes care of the garden, but the devil takes care of the lawn. <laughs> Don't you think so? Yeah. <laughs> but how do you do in winter? Because the winters are oh, tough, Oh, crochet, no? crochet, and uh, make rugs, braid rugs. That's how you keep yourself busy? Oh, yes. Uh, keeps me very busy and cook three meals a day. What are you doing now? Uh, what am I doing now? I'm trying to uh, weed my carrots and I'm going to cultivate the potatoes and radishes over there and onions, carrots, and uh, oh, I have a lot of onions. Everything needs weeding. It's all weedy. And the flowers, I can't work in there now because they're um, high and uh, I break them all off. I see. Do you have a Do you have a, a big family, or are you alone? Uh, I have um, Otto Walters uh, living upstairs. He uh, rooms with me. Yeah, that's my interest: uh, raising uh, vegetables and flowers. It's a lot of fun. I like it much better than going out and gossiping. Do you like it living in Glencoe? Oh, very much. I wouldn't. Uh, my sisters wanted me to come to the cities, but I would not go to the cities. <laughs> no? Why? Well, it's so nice out here, seeing all these flowers grow. I love that, you know. I don't care much for the city. <laughs> I understand you very well. <laughs> when you have such a beautiful garden... <laughs> That's what... Uh... Dear old Miss Litzau, Without you and your beautiful garden, we might have missed Glencoe altogether. Of course, that day, there was also the town fair. populace was not for it. So therefore, uh, they didn't get the respect that was due them. I mean, they they died That's just right. as easy You're as right. anybody else did. They bled just as red of blood. So we try to promote uh, for God and country. Okay? That's what it's all about. We've all been in the armed forces. We all know what it's all about. And hopefully, some of our younger generation will take hints from what we're doing. The high schools or grade schools around the community, we donate the flags to them and we promote promotionalism, uh, uh, Americanism, I'm sorry, what is that around the community. Oh, we, we have with us That's some... That's French, you ought to know what that is. We, we, have some, <laughs> we have with us some royalty that was formed in your country. You better explain. Uh, that the commander. Chef to go. G fifty-seven or G five seven. B nine under B nine. Seventy-two under all seven two. Here's a bingo. Hang on to your cards, okay? Georgette, it's a good bingo. Anybody else? Okay. B two. 
grew up in the metropolitan area with the, the hustle and bustle, and I'd never go back. Why wouldn't you go back? Everything is slower out here. You, you know people. You can you can look across in a, in a celebration like this, and you can see people that you know. You look at guys like, what's your occupation? I don't know if I want to say. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm the assistant chief of police in this community. But we loosen up and we're human too, right? Okay. <laughs> It was a Saturday of June a few years ago. Here I was in Glencoe having a good time with the town folks. For days we traveled around Minnesota filming school graduations, shopping malls, Indians, miners, factories. It felt good to be on the road again, camera in hand, making friends. Who are you? What channel is it for, they always ask. We're French, and this is a documentary for public television. Oh, well, we're all Germans here. Welcome to Glencoe, Minnesota. So, we settle down at the Star Motel. A very quiet Sunday morning. Glencoe is a small farming community, 60 miles west of Minneapolis, with 5,000 inhabitants and a few industries. There are nine churches in town, seven Protestant, two Catholic, no synagogue. Chapman, head of the First Congregational Church of Glencoe, is an amiable gentleman, very open-minded. We do it the way we did it. You know, change comes slowly uh, in a, an area like ours. Uh, people like to do it the way their parents did it and the way their grandparents did it. And yet there's the tension of the youth group or the youth uh, culture uh, wanting to change things, too. And uh, I don't know how the balance works out, but uh, that's there. I think that's also part of modern life. The divorce rate in our country is up. And it's here? Yeah, it's up here, too. Uh, and I think that's really a recognition of the fact that many marriages uh, 20 years ago were in trouble, but they stayed together. And 50 years ago, a divorce was almost unheard of. But the problems within the home and the marriage were still there. Uh, you know, I think divorce is a recognition of the fact, at least one part of it is that it's a recognition of the fact that there's some marriages that end in failure. And they don't hold them together anymore, artificially. Seen by an outsider, the Glencoeites are a quiet, somewhat placid, extremely friendly group of people. But they have one devastating passion, lawn mowing. At all hours, men, women, children chop furiously every bit of grass that sticks out. Maybe a vestige of the pioneer spirit. 